Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we do a small stamped concrete patio. This patio is going to be 16 feet by 10 feet, about six inches thick. So what we're doing is we measured out from the building 10 feet to set that form on the right, the 16 foot form. So we got that parallel with the building. And then we put a 10 foot form right here, the one that's right in front of you. And did a 345 off that to get it square. But we're also going off, there's a frost wall right there in front of me. So, and that frost wall comes right off 90 degrees from the building. So we could measure off that too to make sure all our forms are square. So now what we're doing, we had to wait for the, the landscaping guy to get that granite step in there before we could put that last form on. We're going to match right up to that granite step. And you can see the form we're putting on now is we're uh, screwing it right into the concrete foundation. So we're using that DeWalt hammer drill with a masonry bit. And my guys love that thing, the, the battery operated uh, drill there. So if you guys want that thing, that'll be down in the description. That's their one of their favorite tools for drilling and screwing boards into concrete. That's what Darren's saying right there. Um, and that form, you can see with Luke screwing it in the end, that, that slopes a little bit away from the building. So this isn't going to slope away from the building a couple inches. So we're pouring the creed here. We got a 4,000-3-8 PSI mix. We got fiber meshing here. You can see we got a matter rebar in there. We got uh, slab bolsters under the rebar, so it's holding it up off the ground a couple inches. We got Tia back today. Tia's working. She's pouring some concrete again with us, so you'll start seeing her more and more and more videos coming up. So what we're doing is we're getting the concrete in there, and we're getting our edges magged. We set the forms all to grade so we can mag the concrete right to the top of the form. And then we snapped a chalk line, and we put on some ISO strip up against the building, so and we set that right to grade so we could mag that up against the building. And now we're just going to wet screed it to, to get it level. And remember, it's all sloping away from the building towards me there on the outside edge a couple inches. So it's going to shed water pretty good. So, the, you know, when you're doing a stamped concrete patio, you want to make sure, especially exterior like this with no roof over it, you want to make sure it has good slope to it because just the pattern itself will give you small highs and lows in the pattern which is going to collect water. So if you don't put any slope to it, you're going to have a lot of puddles all over it. And even when you put 2 inches pitch and 10 feet like this, and it's going to shed most of the water. But even on something like this, it's apt to have, you know, some small tiny little puddles here and there that just need to evaporate. So what we're doing next is we, we had to let it dry up for a little bit. So we let it dry up, set up for about an hour. And now we're on it, checking it. We mag floated the whole thing. We got some release powder on there. So we're just checking it to see if it's about ready to start setting stamps. And, you know, obviously one way we can do that is with that, that roller, that texture roller we have. That'll give you a pretty good feel of how soft or how hard the concrete is. So it felt pretty good. So we're going to try setting this first stamp. And we want... We want to be parallel with the building. We want to be square with the building. So we're going to set it right up against the building to start with. And you can see those stamps. This is an ashlar slate pattern. They have a notch in that. What The way I have them in that bottom right here in corner. So all the other ones we set have to be set the same way for them to all line up right. You could start that first stamp. You could almost start it you know, any way you want. You could have turned it 90 degrees, 180 degrees. That part really doesn't matter. But once you set that first stamp, then all the other ones got to go the same way when you're using this type of pattern. So we get all our edges rolled, get good texture all the way around the edges. And then we just go to town setting these stamps. You know, there's the slab's ready. It's out in the sun. It's kind of windy out today. So we want, just want to make sure we go, go uh, slow and steady and get these stamps down so the surface of that concrete doesn't dry out on us too fast. 
Now, like I said, this is 16 by 10. So if you're new, if you're new to stamping concrete or if you're just learning and you want to try it, you know, I wouldn't recommend doing anything larger than this. Maybe even a little bit smaller if it's your first one. Just to get a feel of how the concrete uh, feels under the stamps and you don't definitely don't want to start too early on something like this or your stamps will you'll push your stamps down too far into the concrete and you'll leave you know dips all over the place you can see we're wearing these special rubber shoes that we can step into with our our boots or our sneakers and they have really flat soles on them so it helps prevent leaving any shoe marks or heel marks going through the stamps. The stamps are pretty rigid. They're just about three quarters of an inch thick. So, I mean, you got to push on them pretty hard to create a dip. But if the concrete's too soft, you can definitely do it. So we're just moving along. You can see we pick up a stamp. When we pick up a stamp, we look at the impression it leaves. And if it leaves a good impression, then we'll we'll move it on if it if not we'll set it back down and we'll we'll tap on the stamp again a little bit you can see Darren has got a little tool there he's he's using to make sure all the the grooves in between the stones go all the way to the building and he's touching up a little piece there with that little yellow touch up mat But all in all, this took us, you know, about 30 minutes to go from one end to the other. And if you guys want to learn how to do this, I mean, I, I do have a stamp concrete course down in the description of the video, guys. When, you know, I show you step by step everything you need to know if you want to learn how to do this. It's, it's really probably the best course online there is, um, especially for the money. It's really inexpensive. So... If you're thinking about learning how to stamp concrete, I would definitely recommend getting that course. I, I go right through all the steps and I teach you everything you need to know. Then it's just a matter of going out and practicing on some concrete, trying it. I mean, that's really, you, you can't learn that online, you, how the concrete feels. You got to get the stamps out there on the concrete and actually try it. So that's why I wouldn't recommend doing anything bigger than this if you're first starting out. So the next day we come back and we, we saw our control joints and these are just to help just in case the concrete wants to crack you know something this size is borderline we err on the side of caution so we're putting one down the middle if this thing does want to crack chances are it'll crack right in that nice straight saw joint now and you won't see a big ugly crack in this thing so once we get it sawed we'll brush off most of that release powder and then we'll just get to washing it we got to wash all that release powder off and get it ready for sealing and we'll let this thing sit for a few days before we seal it but getting the release powder off is really important because if you don't if you don't get it all off some of it got pressed right into the surface and that stuff won't wash off but all the loose stuff you got to get washed off or when you go to spray the sealer on it just won't adhere to the surface it'll start flaking off in you know a matter of days or weeks so we just use a regular 3000 psi pressure washer you know a fan tip we we don't get the tip too close to the surface you can see he's keeping it about 16 or 18 inches away and then we use some dawn dish detergent and water and just wash the surface just like you're washing a car that dawn dish detergent helps break down the release dust and just gets rid of any residual dust that was left on there and then we just give it a good couple rinses and that gets the surface nice and clean so hey if this is your first time watching me you know my name's Mike Day I specialize in all types of concrete and if you like that kind of stuff you know hey go down go down there and hit subscribe I come out with a couple videos a week if you like the video you know please hit the like button